This film concerns the second year of treatment of an autistic little patient who at the age of three was admitted at a child psychiatric hospital. To begin with, a few scenes are shown from the first week of her stay. The behavior of the normal twin sister, who also spent a few days on the ward, was in marked contrast. In the first part of the film, we see that the patient begins to avoid more primitive behavior, such as messing about with water. This avoidance has a phobic character, but it promotes development, for at the same time her behavior becomes more mature. A few scenes are shown of the twins' fifth birthday. The patient lies in bed and cannot be got out of it. The development of this situation is explained in the second part of the film. Things at which the patient, in her autism, used not to look, now become visible to her. This vision, however, gives her such fear that she retreats to bed. Only in the course of a few months does she resume some freedom of movement. Music sounds, our patient, Jose, begins to rock with the rhythm. Her twin sister continues to play. She jumps to and fro across a chalk line drawn on the floor. Only Jose shows this monotonous stereotype behavior when music sounds. Physically, the twins closely resemble each other. Blood groups and fingerprints indicate the likelihood that they are identical twins. When Jose handles the dominoes, she shows little interest in her environment. She is entirely absorbed in the direct sensory experience of this contact. Her sister is constantly in contact with her fellow men and gives an extrovert impression. When the nurse sings a lullaby, slaap kindje slaap, Jose continues the melody. Her sister sings out of tune, but she shows already an understanding for the words, which our patient still lacks. Jose does not look at the singing nurse, there is no visual contact. By the end of the first year of life, the autism had become apparent. At that time, the patient refused to start masticating. She has completely failed to learn this. She plays and messes with food without any clearly defined structure, whereas her sister finishes a mug of milk in a normal way. Jose seems to conjure the food away by smearing the milk on the table. We can suppose a deep-seated fear of biting incorporation. She destroys a dry biscuit with a thumbnail, which she sometimes also uses to tear paper. Only in this way is she capable of destruction. She cannot bite. Occasionally, Jose stares at a lamp, smiling. The light source would seem to be a landmark for her, which emanates reassurance. Jose is quicker than her sister in placing the pieces on the form board of the Terman test.
When she is ready, José looks at Kerry. Whereupon she resorts to her most common stereotypy, finger tapping, with the fingers held against the lips. A year later, a similar performance test is carried out, putting together a human figure from detached head, arms and legs. Kerry places the arms and then the legs below the trunk. The psychologist asks whether she can also put the extremities differently. Can you do it make that poppetje, Carrie? Is it anders maken of niet? Zeg, maak hem eens anders. Hij heeft geen armpjes gekregen van jou. Kan je hem ook armpjes geven? When subsequently José proves to have put down the arms correctly, Carrie takes this performance apart. During the first year of treatment, José has become less rigid. Among other things, the therapist made use of music, rhythm and dancing. Also, José has approached and explored his body in various ways, and contact has improved as a result. But very often still, José avoids visual contact. In the dolls' houses, José's attention is attracted chiefly by the doors and windows. More than with the dolls, she is preoccupied with the opening and closing of the doors. Being open also fascinates her in the windows, through which she sometimes introduces little dolls and pieces of chalk. A toy train and a doll are discarded in a corner behind the puppet playhouse. José is also deeply interested in the drawing of the curtain of the large window in the playroom. The therapist asks, say curtain, gardijn. And she repeats the whole question. Her interest is so great that the therapist can use it as a lever to make her repeat the word curtain. In this hour, she speaks remarkably often. <laughs> so, 
She was always again interested in the windows of the doll's house. When the therapist calls her away, she suddenly wets herself. She is somewhat taken aback by this and says, oh, bah. Klaas. Klaas. When she passes the windows in the corridor, Jose's attention is again attracted by the possibility of open and closed. She even holds her feet outside the window as if she herself wants to go through. She throws her shoe out of the window and then other things too. This throwing is a compulsive act. Her reality testing would seem to be reduced by it. It is difficult to retrieve the things which José throws out of the window. The therapist looks for a situation in which reciprocity is more easily attained. This is found in the swimming pool, where José throws things into the water, which can then be given back to her. The therapist encourages her to accept the shoe again. Especially the hook with which things are retrieved has Jose's interest. She does not look at the therapist who gives her the things. Initially, she was greatly excited when the hook approached her. So, Jose, take it. Now, have a good one. Yeah, have a good one. So, do one. Oh, okay. After playing in the water on a few occasions, Jose's enthusiasm diminishes, and suddenly she no longer wants to enter the swimming pool. She shows phobic avoidance of this messing and splashing situation. During the same period, Jose's playing with water in the playroom is at a more mature level than before. She washes rags in water as she saw her mother and the nurses in the ward wash linen. During this activity, she says to herself, no kid, pyjamas. Jose has also cleaned chairs in the approved manner of a housewife. Here the therapist is trying to elicit this behavior with hardly any success.
So, you can't stalk. Even after the removal of her shoes and stockings, Jose refuses to go into the sandbox. She marks the boundary to which she is willing to go by taking steps along the edge, counting one, two, three, seven. The therapist compliments her with her counting achievement and mentioned anxiety and aversion as the roots of her refusal to enter the sandbox. The therapist praises her for her searching attention. He often verbalizes what Jose does. On the same day, another game previously developed is repeated. Jose places a puppet beneath the scales which stand on white legs. The therapist then executes a snapping or biting movement with this instrument, which is probably burdened by its resemblance to a mouth. Jose is gay and interested. Is that so mooi? Is that so mooi? When the therapist attempts to continue the game with his own mouth, Jose is not interested. She is not afraid either. But the situation has less appeal for her than the scales game, in which a degree of symbolization exists. The therapist sings, now we are going to the ward to counterbalance her reluctance by singing. She runs back to resume the game. She does not turn her aggressiveness against the therapist, but throws the puppet playhouse off the table. The three sisters come to visit her on her fifth birthday. First we see the twin sister Carrie. And this is the sister who is a year older. This is the youngest who is not yet four. Her motor endowment is considerable. She can already push off independently on the swing.
Yuzi cannot be induced to play outside. For nearly a month now, she has not even wanted to leave her bed. The sisters resort to sitting with her on the bed. Yuzi makes strikingly wide eyes. Frequently she stresses opening her eyes, then closes them again with emphasis. Two years ago, when José was still at home, she was tearing paper. She could persist in this for hours. The striking feature is the fierceness with which she uses her thumbnail. This is a stereotyped act which greatly preoccupies her. When she has been doing this for some time, she no longer looks at the scraps she makes. Being busy with doors and windows, the throwing and retrieving in the swimming pool have advanced Jose's development. It is as if her eyes were opened and her disposition has become more cognitive. Now, however, she also sees the consequences of destruction. She has developed a special interest in scraps and cigarette ends lying on the floor. She picks them up and throws them behind her as if she is conjuring them away. Then she runs away and walks up the stairs again. She withdraws into a corner because she can no longer manage the situation. She runs back to the mat with the scraps, picking up the scraps and undoing this by throwing them away behind herself excites her so much that the therapist must interfere and guide her back to the ward under some constraint. Jose can no longer tolerate being out of bed. She must pick up all crumbs and scraps on the floor and throw them away behind her. This makes her panicky. The therapist therefore visits her in the dormitory. She does not tolerate removal of the protection afforded by the bed. In her rage, she suddenly verbalizes a whole sentence. It is a mess here. Talking, the therapist shows his understanding for her longing for security. Wrapped in a sheet, she is rocked up and down. The lullaby goes, I, a kapai, Josie shouldn't cry. Naughty though she be, we love her as you see. As a result of this contact, Josie relinquishes the protection of the sheet. She makes a shambles of her bedding. Then she prepares for restoration, but when the therapist wants to help her, she is suddenly completely lost. The therapist says, beautiful spectacles. 
José is now especially interested in opening and closing her eyes and in spectacles. The therapist's eyes also attract her attention. Because José could not be induced to leave her bed and therefore threatened to become too isolated, her bed has been placed in the living room during certain hours of the day. The therapist visits her there and after establishing contact attempts to make José leave her bed. Paper tearing is intentionally introduced by the therapist, and initially José tries to avoid this. Later a game develops in which she participates. She now dares to look at the torn paper. José repeats, beautiful, mooi. Mooi, mooi, mooi. The therapist says, you are getting catty. When the therapist clears away the scraps, José becomes angry. She shouts José, and shouting runs away from the annoying therapist. The therapist shows sympathy with her grief, and again verbalizes what he is doing. She tries to open the cupboard in which the scraps were put away and succeeds after a while. Then she has retrieved the scraps. Yeah, 
We are now standing in front of a door with glass panel and her shadow falls on the panel. When the therapist says, do you like it too? She repeats this. Jose is now more consciously looking at her image mirrored in the glass door. It is no longer only the shadows that fascinate her. She inspects and recognizes her mirrored image. She greets herself, hello, dag, and then says no. She now resists attempts to return to her bed. The therapist makes a game out of this with varied repetitions. She places the chair closer to the glass and when she sees herself she sings Oh how beautiful you are, a popular Dutch ditty. Jose wants to retrieve the scraps from the cupboard, which the therapist emphatically forbids. She takes over this aggression and strikes herself in the face. Her moods change very quickly. She nominates the chair, stool, and bending over it says, Jose, sleep. The therapist repeats this and adds, eyes shut, oogjes dicht, while he closes his own eyes. After three months, Jose has regained sufficient boldness to return to the playroom upstairs, but she takes a piece of her bedding with her, the rubber sheet. She spreads the rubber sheet on the floor of the playroom and presses herself against it. The therapist asks, what are you doing, Jose? But her speech remains unintelligible. She again includes the rubber sheet in her game with the tap. When the therapist is pushed away, he says, may I not stand on it? Whereupon he does stand on it.
Mag een kopje terrein met je komen. Ga je nou langs de rand? When José is playing with pieces of chalk and a pail near the tap, she shows her old stereotype tapping movement again, this time while holding the chalk. On the way back to the ward, she spreads the rubber sheet on the stairs and squarely plants herself on the sheet. The rubber sheet gives her a hold and confidence and constitutes a safe spot in the world. <laughs> 